I'm here to speak to you about a very serious subject, how to make America safe. The vast majority of Americans today do not feel safe. They fear for their children. They fear for themselves. They fear for our police officers who are being targeted with a target on their back. We pray for our police officers in Dallas and Baton Rouge and their families. And we say thank you to the Cleveland Police Department for protecting us. Thank you. We, we know, we know the risk you're taking. And we say thank you to every police officer and law enforcement agent who's out tonight protecting us, black, white, Latino, of every race, every color, every creed, every sexual orientation. When they come to save your life, they don't ask if you are black or white. They just come to save you. We also, we also reach out, we reach out our arms with understanding and compassion to those who have lost loved ones because of police shootings, some justified, some unjustified. Those that are unjustified must be punished. Those that are justified, we must apologize to. It's time to make America safe again. It's time to make America one again. One America! What happened? What happened to? What happened to? There's no black America. There's no white America. There is just America! What happened to it? Where did it go? How was it flown away? I know, I know we can change it because I did it by changing New York City from the crime capital of America to the safest large city in the United States. What I did for New York, Donald Trump will do for America. I have known Donald Trump for almost 30 years, and he has created and accomplished great things in my city and all over the world. But beyond that, this is a man with a big heart. Every time New York suffered a tragedy, Donald Trump was there to help. He's not going to like my telling you this, but he did it anonymously when police officers were shot, when firefighters were hurt, when people were in trouble, he came forward and he helped and he asked not to be mentioned. Well, I am going to break my promise to him. I am going to mention it. This is a man with a big heart who loves people, all people, from the top to the bottom, from the middle to the side. I am telling you this because I am sick and tired of the defamation 
of Donald Trump by the media and by the Clinton campaign. I am sick and tired of it. This is a good man. And America should be sick and tired of their vicious, nasty campaign. You deserve to know this about your next president. He's been a great father, father-in-law, grandfather, and friend to me, my wife Judith, and my family for now almost 30 years. I know him personally, and this is a very good and decent man, and he will be a great president. In the last seven months, there have been five major Islamic terrorist attacks on us and our allies. We must not be afraid to define our enemy. It is Islamic extremist terrorism. For the purposes of the media, I did not say all of Islam. I did not say most of Islam. I said Islamic extremist terrorism. You know who you are. And we're coming to get you. To failing to identify them properly maligns all those good Muslims around the world who are being killed by them. They are killing more Muslims than anyone else. It also sets up a fear of being politically incorrect that can have serious consequences. It did in San Bernardino. It did with Major Nadal. He was yelling, Allah Akbar. The only person who couldn't figure out this was an Islamic terrorist extremist attack was Barack Obama. Who called it workplace violence. This is why our enemies see us as weak and vulnerable. Donald Trump has said the first step in defeating our enemies is to identify them properly and see the connections between them so we can find them and catch them. To defeat Islamic extremist terrorists, we must put them on defense. If they are at war against us, which they have declared, we must commit ourselves to unconditional victory against them. This includes undoing one of the worst deals America ever made, Obama's nuclear agreement with Iran that will eventually that will eventually let them become a nuclear power and ha is putting billions of dollars back into a country that's the world's largest supporter of terrorism. We are actually giving them the money to fund the terrorists who are killing us and our allies. We are giving them the money. Are we crazy? Donald Trump will make sure that any agreement with Iran meets the original goals of the UN and our allies, a non-nuclear Iran. <laughs> Donald Trump is a leader. He will reassert America's position as the nation 
with the best values to lead the world. It was Hillary Clinton who advocated for the overthrow of Gaddafi in Libya. Now Libya is in chaos. Hillary Clinton is accountable for this and much more. Her dereliction of duty and failure to keep her people safe played a major role, as you heard tonight, in the horrific Islamic terrorist murders on September 11 and 12, 2012, in Benghazi, which claimed the lives of four brave Americans. Ambassador J. Christopher Stevens, U.S. Foreign Service Officer Sean Smith, and CIA agents Tyrone S. Woods and Glenn Doherty. May they rest in peace. And Clinton and the Obama administration, for political reasons, lied about the purpose of the attacks, including Hillary Clinton lying directly to the families of the people who were killed right to their face. <laughs> Hillary Clinton's answer to Congress about the de death of these four brave Americans because of her gross failures as Secretary of State was, quote, what difference at this point does it make? What difference does it make? Watch the video yourself and see the arrogant disregard for American lives lost unnecessarily because of her, and then make up your own mind. Anyone who It means we're getting to them. It means we're getting to them. It means we're getting to them. Anyone who can say that it makes no difference how or why people serving America are killed should not be entrusted with the awesome responsibility to protect them and us, and should not be allowed to be our Commander-in-Chief. <laughs> Who would trust Hillary Clinton to protect them? I wouldn't. Would you? <laughs> Donald Trump will change all of that and more. In short, he will lead by leading, not by following. You know Donald Trump will secure our borders. His opponent has had her chance to do this, and she has failed. Hillary Clinton is for open borders. She is. She is in favor of even taking Syrian refugees, even though the Islamic State has told us they're going to put their operatives in with the Syrian refugees, operatives who are terrorists who are going to come to Western Europe and come here and kill us. They've told us that, and she still wants to take in these Syrians. We can't afford to repeat the mistakes of the past. Hillary Clinton's, Hillary Clinton's experience is the basis for her campaign. Hillary Clinton's experience is exactly the reason she should not be President of the United States. There's, there's, there's no next election. This is it. There's no more time for us left to revive our great country. No more time to repeat our mistakes of the Clinton, Obama years. Washington needs a complete turnaround, and Donald Trump is the agent of change, and he will be the leader of the change we need. He will 
make America once again. Like the president I worked for, Ronald Reagan. The shining city on the hill. Vote for Donald Trump for a safer America and for an America headed in a different direction. Greatness! God bless our next president, Donald Trump, and God bless the United States of America! USA!